tunnel nightmare. New video emerges showing Indian workers trapped in the tunnel for 10 days. Shocking remarks. UK panel probes into Rishi Sunak's outrageous COVID comments ahead of a national lockdown. Deadly dengue. Bangladesh battles record dengue deaths as disease patterns change. And Astralumina. Sparkles and space swirl through Astralumina at the South Coast Botanical Gardens in the US. is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News this Tuesday night. We begin tonight in neighboring India with updates on the tunnel collapse nightmare. The first images of dozens of men trapped inside a collapsed Himalayan tunnel have emerged as a complex and frustrating operation to free them enters its 10th day. Video captured by a camera fed through a pipe by rescuers on the surface shows the men wearing helmets and standing inside a large cavern around 60 meters inside the mountain. The 41 trapped laborers have been receiving food, water and oxygen through the pipe after the entrance to the tunnel they were helping to build gave way on the 12th of November. Indian authorities have been exploring strategies to free the men, including inserting another pipe through the rubble that's big enough for them to crawl out of. But any effort to open a passage through the debris has proven tricky due to the unstable terrain and drilling has been frequently paused. In what has been described as the operation's first success, rescuers managed to insert a 53-meter pipe through the rubble, allowing them to deliver their first hot meal of lentils, water, medicine and oxygen to the trapped laborers. A makeshift hospital has been set up at the tunnel's entrance, but a rescue doesn't look imminent as workers continue to brainstorm ways to bring the trapped men out. Bangladesh is undergoing its worst ever dengue outbreak in history, with hospitals packed to the brim and the death toll rising. Last Wednesday, the country recorded 24 deaths, the highest in a day from the mosquito-borne disease. While the disease does not spread from person to person, a mosquito that bites an infected patient then becomes a carrier and can transmit dengue to others it bites. That makes places with high concentration of dengue patients more dangerous for those who are not yet infected. Health experts are alarmed as dengue usually subsides in South Asian region when the annual monsoon rains stop by the end of September. According to the government's Directorate General of Health Services, as of today, at least 1,549 people, including 156 children, from newborns up to those aged 15, have died of the disease. In Bangladesh, which has recorded a total of 301,255 dengue cases this year, the record deaths are roughly five times a last year's tally of 281 fatalities, the highest in a single year in Bangladesh's history until the outbreak this year. The previous highest number of cases in one year, 101,354, was reported back in 2019. <music> Moving on to Israel-Hamas war updates now, as U.S. President Joe Biden believes a deal is close that would release 50 hostages held by Hamas in exchange for Israel's three-day ceasefire and more aid into Gaza. This comes as Israeli military operations are putting medical facilities under severe strain. Speaking to reporters at the White House on Monday, U.S. President Joe Biden said he believes a deal to secure the release of hostages being held by Hamas is close. Qatari mediators have been leading negotiations that could potentially lead to the release of 50 hostages in exchange for a three-day ceasefire and further aid for Gaza. Around 240 hostages were taken during a deadly attack on Israel by Hamas on October 7th. The ferocity of the attack, which killed around 1,200 people, prompted Israel to invade the Gaza Strip. Israeli operations against Hamas in Gaza has put the spotlight on medical facilities within the enclave, with hospitals suffering power cuts and lack of medical supplies. According to health officials in Gaza, at least 12 people were killed at the Indonesian hospital in northeastern Gaza on Sunday night after it was hit by artillery rounds. The IDF says it took action after being fired upon from the facility. And 28 premature babies were evacuated from the Al-Shifa hospital on Sunday, with medical services crippled by Israeli attacks. Eight infants have reportedly died at the hospital, and the World Health Organization reported that all of the evacuated babies were fighting serious infections. 
Israeli troops seized the hospital last week to look for a tunnel network belonging to Hamas Islamists and said that the departure of hundreds of patients and medical staff was voluntary. They also claim to have located a rocket-making workshop inside a mosque in Gaza City. A spokesperson from the IDF accused Hamas of using Islam and the symbols of Islam to create terror. And fighting Gaza also resulted in telecommunication services in the region going down last Friday due to the damage to infrastructure and power outages. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs has sent its emergency telecommunications cluster to set up solar-powered panels for power and to reconnect telecommunications. It also plans to give out wireless radio devices and is waiting in Egypt to be allowed access into the Gaza Strip. North Korea has notified Japan that it will launch what appears to be a spy satellite sometime between Wednesday and December 1st. The U.S. voiced concerns over possible military tech sharing between the North and Russia. North Korea has notified Japan that it will be making its third attempt to send a military reconnaissance satellite into space sometime between November 22nd and December 1st. Pyongyang notified Japan's Coast Guard and said the planned launch would be in the direction of the West Sea and East China Sea. The notice comes after the regime initially had planned to make its third attempt at a military spy satellite launch in October, following two botched launches in August and May, but did not go ahead with the plan. The U.S. Department of State reiterated its concerns on Monday over possible military cooperation between North Korea and Russia amid the looming spy satellite launch. According to the department spokesperson Matthew Miller, any transfer of military technology between North and Russia would violate multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions, adding that Washington would continue to monitor the actions of both parties with their regional allies and respond to North Korea's destabilizing behavior. North Korea's third launch comes amid speculation that Russia might have provided military technology for the planned launch in exchange for military equipment and munitions for use in the Ukraine war. Meanwhile, on Monday, South Korea's military warned North Korea to stop any preparations to launch a military reconnaissance satellite immediately. Chief Director of Operations at the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Kang Woo-pil, vowed to take necessary measures if Pyongyang were to ignore the warning. Although Kang did not elaborate on what those measures would be, the government is widely anticipated to partially suspend the inter-Korean military pact signed in 2018, also known as the September 19th Military Agreement. The inquiry into how Britain handled the COVID-19 crisis was heard in the UK. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was quoted as saying the government should just let people die during the COVID-19 pandemic rather than imposing a second national lockdown. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak reportedly said the government should, quote, just let people die during the COVID-19 pandemic rather than impose a second lockdown. That's according to Patrick Valance, who testified on Monday as part of an inquiry into how Britain handled the crisis. Valance was the government's chief scientific advisor during the pandemic. He made a note in his diary on October 25, 2020, about a meeting involving then-Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Sunak, who was finance minister. The diary entry recorded how Dominic Cummings, Johnson's most senior advisor at the time, relayed to Valance what he said he heard at the meeting. Valance quoted Cummings in his diary as saying, quote, Rishi thinks just let people die and that's okay. This all feels like a complete lack of leadership. A spokesperson for Sunak said the prime minister would set out his position when he gives evidence to the inquiry. Previous evidence has shown Sunak was branded as Dr. Death by one science advisor for his policy in the summer of 2020, encouraging Britons to eat at pubs and restaurants. Senior officials have repeatedly said the government was unprepared for the pandemic. More than 220,000 people died in Britain, and large sections of the economy were shut down. The inquiry is set to run until the summer of 2026. Let's go for a short commercial break. You're watching World News.
Moving on to the road to the White House, where we bring you the latest U.S. election news. The nonpartisan, nonprofit group that has conducted debates for the past nine presidential elections is plowing ahead with four events next year, despite Republicans' promises to boycott. The Commission on Presidential Debates announced the dates and venues for three presidential debates and one debate between the candidates' running mates beginning on the 16th of September and ending on the 9th of October. The presidential debates will take place in San Marcos, Texas, Petersburg, Virginia and Salt Lake City, Utah with the vice presidential debate in eastern Pennsylvania. Aggrieved by what they call political bias, former President Donald Trump and the GOP have promised to sit out any debate conducted by the commission. The Republican National Committee voted last year to boycott the commission's debates, saying they would instead find other avenues for candidates to have a free and fair forum for all Americans. Trump has not participated in any of the three GOP primary debates so far this year, citing his already significant leads in the polls. The new UN report says the world is racing to well past the warming limit as carbon emissions rise instead of plunge. Earth is speeding to 2.5 to 2.9 degrees Celsius of global warming since pre-industrial times set to blow well past the agreed-upon international climate threshold, United Nations report has calculated. Now on Monday, the latest edition of the United Nations Environmental Programme's Emissions Gap Report was published with a gloomy forecast in terms of global warming. According to the report, the Earth is set to warm by 2.5 to 2.9 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial times, suggesting that global emissions must be cut by 42% by the end of the decade if the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit target adopted by the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement is to be met. The new report also showed that carbon emissions from the use of coal, oil, and gas rose 1.2 percent last year. The report comes ahead of the UN's climate change conference, COP28, which begins on November 30th in Dubai. Moving over to Europe now, an Italian court convicted and sentenced over 200 Mafia members and their white-collar associates. The largest Mafia trial in three decades, the convicted received a total of around 2,200 years of prison sentences. Held in the town of La Misia Terme in a specially constructed high-security courtroom that can hold up to 350 defendants and 400 lawyers, Monday's sentencing represents one of the most significant blows to Italy's most powerful organized crime group, the Indrangheta Mafia. Although more than 100 individuals were acquitted, notable persons such as former Forza Italia Senator Gianluca Pitelli and former high-ranking police officers were sentenced along with well-known regional mafia bosses. The Ndrangheta Mafia from Calabria, Italy, operates in about 40 countries and has a near monopoly on European drug trafficking. Monday's verdict marks the end of the three-year-long maxi trial, which was based on the biggest police operation against the crime syndicates since the 1986 to 1992 Palermo maxi trials, which convicted 475 people. Social media company X sued media watchdog group Media Matters, alleging the organization has defamed the platform. Social Network X is suing watchdog group Media Matters over claims that ads for major brands appeared next to content touting Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. Elon Musk's firm says the report defamed it and was based on manipulation. In a Texas lawsuit, X says Media Matters resorted to endless scrolling and refreshing until it found ads next to extremist posts. The company says that misrepresented the typical user experience with the intention of harming X and its business. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has also opened a probe, saying he was extremely troubled by allegations that Media Matters manipulated data. We're at a really critical moment right now. In an emailed statement, Media Matters President Angelo Carusone called the lawsuit frivolous and said it was meant to bully X's critics into silence. The watchdog group is widely seen as liberal-leaning, and its allegations have added to the financial challenges for X. 
Major advertisers, including IBM and Comcast, have pulled marketing on the platform following the report. That comes after a previous exodus of advertisers following Musk's purchase last year of the network then known as Twitter. Ad revenue at X has been down at least 55% on the year every month since the takeover. Many firms have been wary of Musk's contentious posts. Those concerns flared anew this week after the billionaire was accused of endorsing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory posted on X. Welcome back. Floods have devastated southern Brazil. For more on that story and much more, let's take you around the world. The River Sai in the Rio Grande do Sul state, Brazil, reached almost 52.5 feet in height after heavy rains pummeling the city. The U.S. aircraft carrier Carl Vinson arrived at the port in the southern Korean city of Busan today in a show of extended deterrence against North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Moldova President Maya Sungu and Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky honored the memory of people who died during the revolution of dignity 10 years ago. Spain's new cabinet swore in their new charges to King Felipe as most of the senior ministers retained their positions. The latest state of Prince Harry, St. Elton John and five other high-profile British figures lost suit against the publisher of the Daily Mail paper for alleged widespread unlawful behaviour took place today at the High Court in London. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you missed any of today's programmes, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Tonight, we are leaving you in the US as Astra Lumina invited guests to walk through celestial stars at the Queen's Botanical Garden in New York City. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. <laughs>